Now let us begin our class with Brahmanad. Om. Om. Shanti. 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 I wholeheartedly welcome you all to the first English class. And in our first English English class, we will discuss the poem "Stopping by Oats on a Snowy Evening" by Robert Frost. Robert Frost is an American poet, highly respected. for his realistic depictions of rural life and his command of american colloquial language his poetry reveals a key which means eager interest in the varied beauties of nature and his poetry is apparently very spot but his poetry has deep meaningful meanings deep meaningful joys and sorrows of ordinary men and women at the same time we find simple words not fundamental language in his poetry so that even an illiterate person can understand his poems he has been awarded Politician ever four times by the government of America, and these politician awards are awarded to the poets and writers for composing poems or articles. Now let us go through in detail the poem. First of all, let me read out the poem. Whose words? These are, I think, I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his horse fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farm house near, between the horse and frozen lake. the darkest evening of the year he gives his heartless wells a shake to ask if there is some mistake the only other sound is the sweep of easy wheel and downy tread the woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep this poem has deeper meaning so let us understand what deeper meaning it conveys to the readers do you know this poem was the most favorite poem of our past prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru and he always said the last two lines of the poem and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep on his table in deeper sense journey of journey through forest is journey through life itself see our journey life journey begins when we took our part and our journey will come to a stop or will end when we pass away so from birth to death is the journey of life so what did i tell you in deeper level journey through oars is suggestive of journey through life here in this point the point 
is the speaker itself. The speaker is tempted to stay longer when he came across the scenic beauty of the nature and he acknowledged the pull of obligations and the considerable distance yet to be traveled before he took rest for the night. After stopping by those, see the title of the poem answers three questions. Who stopped? By who? On his going in? Here, the speaker himself. And who is the speaker of the poem? The speaker of the poem is Robert Frost. So the poet stopped by course on a snowy evening. My second question, where did the poet stop on a snowy evening? The poet stopped by course on a snowy evening. And my third question is, when did the poet stop by course? The poet stopped by course on a snowy evening. So we get three answers from the heading itself. My first question was who stopped by course on a snowy evening? The answer is the speaker or the poet himself stopped by course on a snowy evening. Where did second question? Where did the poet stop? On a snowy evening, the answer is by oats. And my third question is, when did the poet stop by oats? The answer is on a snowy evening. I think you must be knowing the difference between the oats and the forest. Oats means a small stretch of area filled with trees. And what does the forest mean? A forest means a vast stretch of area filled with the trees. And another difference is that we won't find animals, wild animals in the woods, but we will find animals, wild animals in the forest. And the third difference is Woods is owned by a particular person, whereas the forest is no, not owned by any particular person. Forest is a natural resource. It is made by a particular man, but forest is not made by any particular man. This is the difference that we find between the oars and the forest. Whose oars these are, I think, I know that this after stopping, he did not stop in the oars. Where did he stop? He stopped by the oars. After stopping by the oars, he thinks that he knows whose oars these are that is known to him. That means he knows the owner of the oars. Whose oars these are, I think I know. And he knows who is the owner of the oars. His house is in the village door. And where is the house of the owner? His house refers to the house of the owner of the oars. The house of the owner of the oars is in the village nearby the oars. And do you know the name of the village where the owner of the oars was living? He was living in a, in the village known as Franconia. Franconia. F-R-A-N-C-O-N-I-A. Franconia is the name of a village in America and there was the jungle nearby 
the village his house is in the village though he will not see me stopping here here he refers to the owner of the house the owner of the jungle will not see the speaker or the poet stopping in his jungle or in his woods towards his woods filled up with snow and the quiz watching the woods the woods filled up with snow in each the poet it is the speaker who is watching the woods filled up with snow see poets are quite different from us they are not materialistic people they don't run after money and power they keep the doors of their mind open all the time to enter all the good ideas good thoughts so that they can compose poems to guide the society yes the poets the writers and the story tellers or writers they show the way to the society and we the people are materialistic and what do we do we don't run after the beauty of nature rather we run after money we run after power this is the difference between us and the poets here the poet was also fascinated by the enchanting beauty of the nature as he was mesmerized by the beauty of the nature he thought to remain in that scenic beauty of the nature in order to enjoy its beauty that was the reason why he stopped one day while returning to his farmhouse by the woods because the beauty of the woods attracted him very much after stopping by the woods he thought that he knew the owner of the house who was living nearby the village known as Franconia and at the same time he thought the owner of the woods would not see him there why because it was the winter evening and the weather was not at all favorable for ordinary persons like us or materialistic persons like us to come out of our house to go to the woods and enjoy its beauty so he thought or he expected the boy expected the owner of the woods would not see him stopping by his woods that were filled up with snow and threw the enchanting beauty to the hearts and souls of the poets my little horse must take a quick question is what where may it strange s p r a n g is strange here little little means ordinary or humble but the boy never paused calls his horse and it's nicely and little horse my little horse must think it your need to pause too he is stopping by wood or the boy is stopping by wood so the boy is stopping by wood must be thought by the horse and strange and square animals are not attracted by the beauty of nature we the ordinary people or the materialistic people are not also attracted by the beauty of the nature only once in a year or twice in a year we go to a hilly side or forest area or jungle area or our picnic purpose and when we go for a day and two days we enjoy we enjoy our journey when we go on a picnic but when 
We are saying, oh, you, you have to go and remain in a forest area or in a hilly area or in a jungle area. We will be mad. We will say, sorry, I will not be or we will not be able to stay here permanently as we are external to stay in uh, the jungle of sky campus. As we are habituated to live in cities and villages, we will not be able to adjust ourselves in any hilly area or in a place nearby to the forest or the woods. So my little horse must think it quick. Where we what straight his horse must think that his master's stopping by course was very strange. To stop without a farm house near. The horse was extant to stay near a farmhouse. But that evening, when the boy stopped by the woods, there was no farmhouse nearby. And the boy stopped by the woods without a farmhouse nearby. The horse or his horse must think that his master stopping by woods must be very strange. Between the woods and Trojan Lake. In fact, the point stopped in between a Trojan Lake and the woods. One side there was a Trojan Lake and another side there was the woods. There was the jungle. So the point stopped in between the woods and the project lake. The darkest evening of the year. It means the longest night of the year. That is the 21st December which is very near to 25th December. And you all know that Christians celebrate Christmas on 25th December. So the boy stopped by Oath on 21st December of that year. That was 1922. In fact, this boy was written by the boy Robert Frost in 1922. And it was published a year later. That was in 1923. So, when the boy stopped by the woods, it was the 21st December of 1922. So, what does this indicate or what does this refer? The darkest evening of the year. This phrase refers to the longest night of the year. So what have you understood? After stopping by the horse, he thought that he, his horse, his little horse, must think his stopping by horse a strange or a quick. Because there was no farmhouse nearby the horse and, and his horse was extra to stay by the woods. That evening, when the boy stopped by the woods, he thought that his humble horse or his little horse must think he is stopping by woods very strange. In fact, he stopped in between the woods and the project today. And in words, the 21st December of 1922. So it is called the darkest evening of the year. If you are asked, what do you mean by the darkest evening of the year? You have to write the answer. The longest night of the year. Now let us proceed to the third stanza. He gives his harmless wells a shake. Here he refers to the horse. The horse gives his harmless bells a say. Why don't the horse 
gave his harmless love such that because he thought that his master stopping by was very peculiar, very strange, as there was no farm house nearby to take rest and get food for the night. He gives his harmless bells. Do you know harmless bells? Harmless bells means small bells attached to a band around the necks of animals. So there was a band in which small bells were attached and when the horse moves or sets his head, it gives the tinkle sound only to draw the attention of his master, to draw the attention of the poet. The horse gives his harness bells a shake. Here sack is used as noun, a shake. As the article is used, a before shake, it is used as a noun to move here and there. We say handshake. Sack also is used as a verb. I shake my hand with my friend. And the past tense of sack is shoe. And past participle form of sack is shaken. So, what did the horse do when? He found that his master stopped by the horse one week, one wintry evening. One wintry evening, when the horse found that his master had stopped by the horse, he thought that his master stopping by the horse was quick. And to draw the attention of his master, he shook his harness with in order to draw his attention. He gives his harness well a shake to ask if there is some mistake. Here the reason is given. Why did the horse give his harness well a shake? To ask. What did the horse want to ask his master? He wanted to ask his master if there was something wrong with him. To ask if there is some mistake. The only for the sounds. You see sound apostrophe s. It is not the plural form of sound and it is also not used in possessive case. It means sound each. Here, the only other sound each. The swing of easy wing and down leg. See easy wing and down leg. What does it mean? It means a flowing of wing and falling of snow pieces on the floor and you know snow a piece of snow is very short like a feather but remember my students even the petals of flowers when fall on the ground it gives the tiniest sound whatever falls on the ground makes a sound see in that calm atmosphere in that Serenity, a tranquil atmosphere, the boy could hear two sounds. What were they? They were the shaking of the harness bells of his horse, and the second sound was the easily flowing wind and falling of snow pieces on the ground. So these were the two sounds that the boy could hear in that calm atmosphere or in that tranquil atmosphere. The only other sound is the sweep of easy wind and down neck. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. This lovely, dark and deep. Only the poet is fascinated by the beauty of the nature, but the house and the owner of the wood were not fascinated by the enchanting beauty or the mesmerizing beauty of the nature. Lovely, you know, lovely means very beautiful, very attractive, and dark. It was the winter evening, and the atmosphere was cloudy, and snow was. Falling, 
so it was dark and there were thickly grown trees that was why the word the gives out but remember in the ark lovely dark and deep what does it indicate it indicates the that the poet was attracted or fascinated by the beauty of the nature whereas the half and the owner of the boats were not attracted by the fascinating beauty of the nature the woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep i have promises to he was attracted in that tranquil atmosphere in that enchanting beauty of the nature he wanted to stay there or remain there for a long time but he could not do so he could not remain in that place for a long time why could not he stay there for a long time he could not stay there for a long time because he had promises to keep we have our promises to keep we have our duties and responsibilities to be carried out to be filled by god see if we remain in a place for a long time we cannot be able to do our own duties and responsibilities so we should not be attracted towards the glamour of life we should not be distracted and disturbed by the glamour of life rather we should concentrate ourselves on our own duties and responsibilities as we have to give emphasis to our own duties and responsibilities we cannot remain in a place for a long time if we remain in a place for a long time definitely we will not be able to complete our own duties and responsibilities so we should not be attracted towards the glamour of life we should not be attracted towards the television program we should not be attracted towards the cell phones and other glamour things because we have been sent to this world by the almighty with some duties and responsibilities and we have to do whatever duties and responsibilities assigned to us clear by students so let us not be attracted by the glamour of life since the world was attracted by the beauty by the by the beauty of the scenic beauty of the nature so he wanted to remain then he recalled that he had his own duties and responsibilities to be filled up so he could not stay there for a long time to enjoy the enchanting beauty of the nature but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep these are the famous phrases miles to go before i sleep here sleep refers to death here the lines are repeated twice only to lay emphasis that we have to cover the physical distance we have to make before our long sleep or before our death here these lines also refer not only to the physical distance of the journey or of the trip but also a long life we have before us and the repetition of the phrases and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep indicate the poet's strong determination as he knows that death is the end of life so instead of enjoying the beauty of the nature he remembers his own duties and responsibilities and he remembers that he has his duties and responsibilities in his life so what message does this poem give to us the poem the message the poem gives to us that we must be goal oriented in our lives and at the same time we must not be distracted or distorted by the glamour 
and advances of life. We have to give him passes on our own duties and responsibilities. We should not stop in a place for a long time. We should not waste our time. If we waste our time, we will not be able to fulfill our own duties and responsibilities. So, before I conclude the class, wish you a very good day.